Good morning. My name is John Adam, and today I'll be showing you all how to uh, properly replace the snare drum head. So imagine this. It's a sunny Saturday afternoon. You're walking back from your seat to the baseball game, and in the distance, you hear the crack of a bat, the smell of hot dogs, and beer through your nose from a nearby stadium stall. And almost instantly, you are hit by the sound of We Will Rock You by Queen. All of a sudden, everybody rises and starts the all too familiar stomp, stomp, clap. Now I'm sure all of us have sung this before. And I'm sure all of us have attempted the corresponding hand motions with the feet. But today I won't be talking about the hand and foot motions or the choreography of We Will Rock You. Today I'll be talking about how to attain the sounds that we must try to replicate by clapping our hands together. This sound is derived from the snare drum. Replacing a snare drum head only takes three simple steps. I've been playing the drums for over six years now, and as well as taking lessons from professional teachers, um, I also play in a band. This morning, I will walk you through these three simple steps to replacing a snare drum head. The first is choosing the right head. The second is uh, prepping the surface, and the third is installing the new head. The first step in replacing a drum head is choosing the drum head that most closely suits your purpose. Drum heads come in many different um, sizes and shapes and uh, varieties. There are three, or they can be broken down into three basic um, types of drum heads. There's drum head suited for rock music, which we usually two ply. That's the uh, how many layers of uh, plastic there are. And they're known for their durability because in rock music it's pretty loud and you can play a lot. There's drum heads suited for jazz music. These are usually one ply and they're known for their versatility so you can get a lot of tuning range out of them. And the last type of head are heads for practice. These practice these practice heads are made out of mesh, it's like a synthetic material. And so you don't annoy your neighbors when you're practicing or your friends. Now that I've talked about the different types of drum heads on the market, we will now learn about prepping your surface. The second step in replacing a drum head is prepping your surface. First, you're going to remove your drum head. And you do this by loosening all of the tension rods around the drum head. The tension rods are these things right here, and you just do that by cranking them. Once you loosen all the tension rods, you're going to take off the rim and the tension rods, put them in a safe spot, and then you're going to discard the old head, and that is this white thing right here, this entire white head. Next, you're going to wipe down the surface. So when you take this off, it's going to reveal basically a rim, like on a frying pan, you have that rim piece. You're just gonna wipe that down with a cloth you don't mind getting dirty. There's a lot of dust and dirt and stick shavings that get stuck in that area. And so you're just gonna, you know, take your, take your cloth around there once or twice, it really doesn't matter. If you feel anything rough, especially on a wood shelf, you wanna take some sandpaper and just sand that down so the snare drum can sit evenly on it when you go into tuning it. Now that you have your surface prepped, we'll move on to what really makes the snare drum a dynamic instrument. The third and final step in replacing a drum head is installing the new drum head. What you're going to do is place the new drum head on the snare drum. Normally, a new drum head is going to look pretty white, not dirty like this one. What I like to do is put the new snare head and match the logo with the logo of the snare drum. This creates a professional look. Next, you're going to give your drum CPR. You do this by, like we all learn CPR class. Take your hands and you just press down evenly on the front of the drum. And according to schoolofrock.com, you're going to hear a cracking sound, but that's just the glue in the head cracking and it's totally normal. This stretches the head so that it holds its tune better for longer. Next, you're going to take your 
trim and the tension rod so that you place it to the side and you're going to place it back on. Finally, we're going to get to tuning the drums. So now that you have your rim and your tension rods on the drum, you're going to go around and finger tight all of the tension rods until you can't twist anymore. This is pretty simple. Next, you're going to take your drum key and you're going to go around the drum in a star shaped pattern, much like changing a car tire, and you're going to give it one full turn. And I'll do this in a star shaped pattern going across the lug each time. So you do one, two, three, four, five, six. If you want a low tuning, then you'll probably only go one or two turns, full turns, and then you'll stop there. If you want a higher tuning, depending on what kind of music you want to play, you'll just keep going until you reach a pretty, you know, high tuning. Next, you're going to try to match the tone out of one of these um, tension rods with the rest of them. So if you have one tone right here, you're going to try to match the rest of them, uh, the rest of the five, with this tone. This makes sure that you don't have any unwanted overturns. You want the drum to be in tune with itself. Finally, if you can't get rid of those overturns, what you will do is take gaff tape or a moon gel and put it anywhere on the drum that is resonating um, in a place you don't like. So there you go. To summarize, I've shown you the three simple steps to replacing a drum head. Choosing the drum head, secondly, prepping the surface, and thirdly, installing the new head. Now you too, drum roll please. On your way to becoming a drum tuning aficionado. Thank you.